the point of this episode is we, we we ended it on a cliffhanger. We apologize to Hashtag Nation. By the way. We don't apologize. We don't. It's it's all method to the madness, guys. It's all method to the madness. There we don't apologize. We keep you coming back. So there is a stark difference because this whole year has been crazy, you know, with, you know, with the pandemic, the teams, uh, Tampa Bay winning the Super Bowl, which is ridiculous. But the point is this. We talk about 2021 versus 2022 picks, draft picks. Now, hopefully things kind of resume, resume back to normal before the 22, 2022 draft happens. Wish I could talk. But the point is that we're trying to get to is that what is going to be different in this year's draft that will be different in, in past years and future years? So I really think that the 2021 draft is so unique in a variety of ways where you're going to see picks go hand over fist in the 2021 draft versus future years. I think people will be more likely to give up picks in the 2021 because you didn't see a lot of these guys than they would mm-hmm. 2022. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm curious to see what the, what the nation and what your take is that is going to be on. Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. 2021 and 2022 are weird, right? So they're kind of like everybody... Everybody looks at the draft and thinks that everything's equal, right? But this college season was not equal. No. You know, this is going to be a very volatile draft where we could see a bunch of tricks, a bunch of picks traded every other pick because teams are just thinking they can get better value next year. Absolutely. We could see teams jump up and say, we need to go get the assets that we're sure of. And you might see a bunch of guys drafted way earlier than they probably should be because teams are just afraid of the end of the board, right? Um, you may see teams looking to kick and get 2022 picks because, you know, they feel like they're going to get the most return on their value by by a thirsty 2021 team, uh, and they're willing to give up 2022 picks. Uh, there's a lot of different scenarios that could play out. And with that being said, I don't think you need to look much further than the division to tell you that is the tale that's happening by at least a couple teams inside the AFC East. Now, the question, Mar, is what do the Bills think? Do the Bills trust their scouting department? Do the Bill, should the Bills trust their scouting department? Let's start with that. Should the Bills trust their board? Should the Bills trust their scouting department? I mean, we, we, could talk about, we could talk about the Tremaine Edmonds, the Trey Whites, the Josh Allens, the Matt Milano's. But with an asterisk, because that was that Milano wasn't the current department that's in there. Um, we could talk about a lot of those guys, but then we can also talk about the Cody Fords. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think people will agree by and large he's not met the expectation for a guy that was traded up for. Sure, um, sure, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, you look within the division, but it's it's interesting to me to see the dynamic of. Okay. Do you trust your department? Yes, I think you do. I think you definitely trust your department or else they wouldn't be working for you. But (laughs) the propensity of teams to trade current picks or trade away future picks, I think it's weird because you expect things to get back to normal for next year so that you can accurately scout and have your picks for the future. Uh A lot of teams really aren't thinking that way. No. No. Well, and this is sort of where things get a little crazy this year, right? Because most teams that they did play, they only played an abbreviated schedule. A lot of your top picks, they didn't play in 2021. They opted out. We cut a whole half hour episode on Joe Tryon. He opted out. Mm-hmm. There was no purpose of him playing, right? None. So you're talking about drafting a guy who didn't play football last year, right? No. Like, and not because of injury, because it would have probably hurt his draft stock to do so. You know, yep. what are you going to do? Go out there and play four games and, and look foolish? Like, why Why would you do that? Here's what gets me, Paul. And this is the funny, this is the complete, 
and total irony of the entire situation. Mm-hmm. You're trading picks for players, right? So if we look just just in the first round of this year, mm-hmm. uh, Jags have a first round pick from the Rams for for Ramsey. That was a carryover. Yeah. Jets got one for from the Seahawks for uh, Jamal Adams. You know, um, Jags have a second round pick from the Vikings for Yannick Nag- N- Nagoku. Mm-hmm. Um, Stafford third round pick for the Lions. For, you know, yep. from the Rams. Ram- Rams mm-hmm. do they even have any picks anymore? Like at this, point? I don't the, know. <laughs> the, the Colts got a third rounder for Wentz, so they're trading picks for knowns. Right. When you trade picks for to move up in the draft, you're trading for what they call an unknown. Mm-hmm. But the irony of it is that they're all unknowns. You don't know if these guys are going to work out on your team or not. But you bring up a you bring up a good point there, Mar. You, and we've seen Buffalo Buffalo did was did this with Diggs, right? We're going to trade an asset that we're not sure of because we think the value is better in something that we are sure of. Yes. And I think there's been a lot of player for pick deals um, that are coming to roost, right? So the NFL is telling us right now, if you look at the number of players that are being traded for picks, the NFL is telling us that teams are a little afraid of the end of this draft as well as they should be, right? You could draft a guy in the fifth round that literally no other team has on their board and you could pick him up as an undrafted free agent after the draft, but you're going to burn a fifth round pick on him, right? Why do that? Why not just include a conditional fifth round pick uh, to, to to trade for Yannick Nagoku, like yeah, why, that's but I, that's a great point. You're absolutely right, and I don't think you need to go much further than looking inside the division for 2022. So you look at what the Jets have done, right? The Jets have yes, they traded their quarterback, right? But the Jets have ultimately been involved in trading. They've acquired six picks in 2022 and traded away two, right? Mm-hmm. So the Jets have acquired four picks for the 2022 draft already. And the draft is still weeks away. And that's forward thinking. That's very forward thinking on that. Absolutely. Right. But doesn't it tell you that the jets are saying, listen, we don't think 2021 is going to give us the best return on our investment. So we're going to use our asset. Now we're going to leverage that for as much future assets as possible. Right. Let's use our assets right now. And let's just get as many picks in 2022 as we can. Because 2021 scares the hell out of well, us. Nothing, and it's a perfectly fair argument to make. Nothing, t- nothing, exactly. The Sam Darnold trade, if that doesn't clue you into how this draft is going to play out, right. a sixth in 2021, but a second and fourth in 2022, mm-hmm. like, okay, if mm-hmm. I was the, if I were the, the if I was the uh, Panthers, I would have did that this year. Right. I definitely would have, yeah. I would have said, I'll, I'll give you a second and fourth in this year's draft and a sixth mm-hmm. next year. Right. That's a steal then. But, I mean, right. honestly, full disclosure, as far as that that trade goes, I think both teams made out very, very well. I really think they did. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, no, un- it's still an unknown. You don't know how Darnold's going to do down in Carolina. Absolutely. You really don't. No. But those no picks idea. that you have now for the Jets, mm-hmm. a, se- a second, a fourth next year, and a sixth this year, you're mm-hmm. able to get talent at a cheap, cheap rate, even right. though they weren't right up against the cap. You're still able to get players into your system, into your program, and see if they work. Right. And you have, to, you have a chance to miss now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's and amazing. I don't, I don't think you need to look much further than the Dolphins. The Dolphins are mm-hmm. dealing in picks as, as hot as they can. They've acquired, let's see here, the Dolphins have acquired four picks in 2022, and they've traded away, I think, one. And it was really just a first-round swap. Yeah. Right? They I got think a that's... third rounder from the Niners. They got oh, wait, a first wait, wait, round they, pick from the Niners, but they have two sevenths as well. The Rams, the Rams got um a seventh for Aqib Talib. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. The Rams got a seventh from the Dolphins for Aqib Talib. Oh boy. <laughs> hey, the Bills got a seventh for Lee Smith, so what are we complaining about? Yeah, yeah. Good <laughs> good on them, right? But but 2021, when we start talking about the Bills trading up, right? If oh. the Bills are gonna move up, the only way to do that is to either give a second or a third, which I think we're all probably a little uncomfortable with, right? Now, the Bills have some needs, but I think we're all probably a little uncomfortable with that. So if the Bills are at 30 and they want to get to 24, that's a third-round pick. Like, the basement is a third-round pick. You don't have a fourth, so you kind of have a line in the sand. Third or fifth-round pick. You do have two fifths, though. 
you do have two fifths, right? So you can maybe do your, you can go from 30 to 24 with two fifth round picks. I don't think so, Mark. I don't think I don't think that does. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to tell you that. Listen, if you're trying to say that you don't want to give up a second or third this year, right? You give yeah. up your first and a fifth this year, and a third next year. Yeah, I think that's I think that's reasonable, right? Mm-hmm. I think you could do that. But the question becomes, is that worth six spots, right? And anything outside of top twenty four, if you're trying to climb into top twenty, top, you know, try and get to eighteen. You're giving up uh, either a second round pick this year or you're giving up uh, your third round pick this year and the second round pick next year, like at the bare minimum, at the absolute bare minimum. And maybe we'll see lower picks being traded in 2022 because everybody knows those 2022 picks are just more valuable than the current draft picks. I would say that a fourth round pick in 2022 is more valuable than a second rounder in 2021. Oh, that's I'd say a third rounder in 2021. I think second round. That's oh because of the conditionals. All right, all right. The I'll, I'll concede right. to that. I'll concede to that. My okay. point was that, that, but I was kind of using that to get my point across and say, listen, mm-hmm. because of the unknowns, you are so relying heavily on your scouting department on these right. Zoom calls that you have with these guys. They're sending you videos. Unless you're at the pro day, you're not going to know what's going on. Right. It's going to be so much tougher to try to scout and evaluate these guys and try to bring them into your system because you can't see them firsthand. Can you do that at the pro date? Yeah. But yeah. How, how how vast is your range? You know what I mean? Right. It's not like you get to see them all in a collection at the combine. I mean, that's always mm-hmm. the easiest one. It's so right. – but a third rounder in 2022, I will agree, it is more valuable than a second rounder in 2021. Mm-hmm. So if you were to move up – first of all, I don't think the Bills are one player away. So I don't think you mortgage this draft. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, oh, they gave up 30 and their second round pick to move up to 17. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think you hurt yourself because then there's a a litany of picks that you have prior to when you're picking again. Mm -hmm. But to move back and acquire picks in this draft, I don't agree with. If you wanted to move back and acquire picks next year, I'm all about it. Mm -hmm. Because... You know you have some financial decisions to make in this offseason. So acquiring more picks for future consideration would help you even more. So I think that's an interesting thought process, right? Because a lot of times we see teams that build dynasties and they do it through the draft, right? And they set themselves up long term. And that's kind of what we always felt Bean and McDermott were doing. We're, we're just always going to draft our future. That's it. We're just always going to draft the next round and we're just going to keep hitting in the draft. And that's the whole goal. We're not going to be able to spend a lot of money in free agency. We're going to resign our own. We're starting to see some of that. But I think that comes with some risk. And that risk is that at some point the draft is going to fail you. Right. And you need to depend on your free agency group. Can the bills go into the season with the roster right now? And can they punt any part of this draft? Do you think the Bills would return to the AFC championship game with the roster they have right now? I believe they can. Okay. So when you look at the draft, right, when you're at 30, getting an impact player at 30 for 2021 is really hard. Like, I know you can call the outliers, but there's more guys who aren't first-year impactful drafted outside of the 20th pick than there are guys who are impactful drafted outside of the 20th pick. I'm just saying. This is where I will go back to you. Do you, your question you asked me, do you trust the Buffalo Bills scouting department? If you trust that they could find quality talent in the second and third rounds, because people will say trade back and acquire more picks, that just gives you the ability to miss on a few guys. That just, if you don't trust your department or if you don't feel like there's a lot of talent, you want to double down, I understand that. But if you trust your department, now, you know, to, 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 to make the call of the, of the specific need that you have. Now, if someone gives you a king's ransom for 30, okay, you, take it. you want to trade out of there? It. Fine, to trade out of there. But the Buffalo Bills, this is why I say this, and we always harp on this all the time, but this is where the connection comes in. The Buffalo Bills for 2022 – Per over the cap, like this is the base salary cap being two hundred three million. All right, the bills are forty five million dollars, have forty five million dollars in cap space with forty one players on the roster. Mm. What do we always say is the cheapest route for teams? The draft. Always. If you're 
If you foresee Edmonds and Allen, those contracts coming up that you're going to have to fill, you know what I mean? Well, if you, <laughs> the Bruder film, back and to the left. If you foresee that Allen and Edmonds are the guys you're going to have to pay and then you see Oliver on the horizon, what better way to fill your roster? I know you want to fill in the free agency, but you still got to take care of the, the, of the franchise players that you drafted. You know what I mean? If Oliver, Edmonds, and Allen, I assume Allen, number one, and then Edmonds and Oliver are in your plans to be like, listen, we got to resign these guys. These guys are staples of our team. It's going to eat up a lot of that cap. You're not going to be able to sign guys in free agency like you like mm-hmm. you want to in the past. You're going to right. see Bean do a, use the a manipulate the cap and the CBA the way he's been doing it this year. A lot of those one year prove it deals because right. the Bills are going to I, I believe continue to keep winning. Mm-hmm. And then when you go into that, you're going to say, listen, what's our cheapest option to acquire more talent? Let's get draft mm-hmm. picks for 2022 and 2023 because we're not going to be able to sign those free agents because we've drafted so well we got to sign these horses that we have or we're going to lose them. So rather than rely on trying to get draft picks, trade players away for draft picks, it's probably wise to trade for future considerations because of where the bills have put themselves. If we look at the contracts that are out there right now, okay. Gotcha. okay. Um, and we look at the contracts that the bills have signed. So the players that they re-signed uh, Milano, Feliciano, Daryl Williams, uh, Hyde and Poyer, they're, you know, those listed out extensions. Those are coming up. Those are coming up. Right. Every single one of those gets you to 2022, but none of those have to be here in 2023. None of them. No. Right. None of them have to be here in 2023. You look at Edmonds and Milano, right? I'm sorry. Um, you look at Edmonds and Allen, right? Allen's fifth year option is 2022. The bills have not exercised Tremaine Edmonds option for 2022. But again, you look at there, there's, there's a gigantic wall that is, 2023 it's you got 2021 2022 retain 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 2023 everybody's gone can you afford to wait till 2022 to deal with the fall off of 2023 that you're that you're going to have the contracts are set up that they can get out of almost all of them in 2023 and allen is not signed past 2022 Edmonds is not signed at all right now for 2022. Hyde, you could let go in 2023. Poi, you could let go in 2023. You're without Beasley at that point because they'll be like 40. Uh, you just clearly don't have Emmanuel Sanders. You can get out of the Milano deal in 2023. You can get out of Darrell Williams deal in 2023. Feliciano, you can get out in 2023. Like Morris, I think, his contract, uh, he, he's an easy out in 2023. Listen, You're eating out on Star me. in 2023. What I'm saying is there's there's a massive wall of 2023. Can you afford to say, well, let's wait till 2022? I don't think you can. I think you can. I, I, I disagree with you. I don't think Paul, you can. Paul, look what you have. Jordan Poyer in 2023. I'll just give you the names because I just pulled it up. 32 years old in 2023. This is 2023 now we're talking about. I know we're going down the line. I understand that. All this matters, though, Mar. Beasley's 34. Matters. Morse is 30. Are you resigning Morse at 30 with his history? Can you get a center at 30? You can get Landon Dickinson at 30, and I will do cartwheels. No, my point is this. In 2022, can you get a – if the Bills – You don't know. No, if the Bills do what they did this year and go to the AFC Championship game, and then you're sitting there at 30, you could draft your next center. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. If you have two second-round picks, you can get another guy for A.J. Klein who's going to be 32. You can mm-hmm. get another guy for Tyler McAvich who's going to be 31. You can get – um. And and then the, and then the guys that are in there in 2023, you have Ed Oliver, Cody Ford, Devin Singletary, Dawson. That draft, that draft right. comes up. You've already traded in your mind, Devin Singletary. Dawson Knox doesn't seem to be a a, a guy that's going to be staying here even at 27 years old at that time. Mm-hmm. Dane Jackson's there. I didn't mean to do that, but Cody Ford is also there. But what I'm saying is this: those none of those guys you have to resign. None of them. That's why you require those picks in 2022 and 2023 to replace your roster and refill that roster. Now, 2022, you talk about Hughes, Addison are the 34 and 35. Emmanuel Sanders is 35. You're not resigning any of those guys. Allen, yes. Mm-hmm. Vernon Butler is going to be 28. Do you, do, you, do you give him another one-year deal? Who knows? Tremaine Edmonds. Trubisky's gone. Mm-hmm. Butker's going to be 28. Levi Wallace going to be 27. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you just have a graveyard. All right. 
let me ask you this is the this question i love going so up with cap stuff with you it's it's it's, let's let me ask you this question (laughs) so aside from the contracts Okay, because I think I think we can all agree that 2021 and 2022 do carry different values. Yes. The only way to find out where Buffalo sits on that is just to wait. We don't know. Like one bill's drive is so buttoned up tight. We don't know. We don't know where their priorities are. That's why these episodes are fun. Right. But good for them. You know, it's nice to not have a leaky organization. Right. Yes. So 2023 scares me. And I know a lot of people are going to say, Paul, it's two years away. What are you worried about? But these are all things that you plan for, right? Like Absolutely. the decisions you make today affect the decisions of tomorrow. So you, these are all things you need to be aware of. And there's a huge wall coming in 2023 mm. that Buffalo just needs to learn to navigate. The contracts that they signed for some of these guys, Milano, uh, Daryl Williams, they get you through 2023 if you want them to. But yes. you can also get out of them, right? Mm-hmm. So you're building the bridge to 2023. Let me ask you this. You're sitting at 30. At 20, I'm going to give you a player, okay? He goes to TCU. Here we go. Trayvon Morig. He's a safety from TCU, okay? You're sitting at 30, and you call uh, – who's sitting at 20? Uh, sitting at 20 is Chicago. Perfect. You think they'll you're take sitting... Trubisky? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're sitting at 20, and Mooring is there. You look at the Colts, and you say, okay, the Colts – Probably could use some safety help, right? We got to get ahead of the Colts. We got to get ahead of the Titans. The Jets are sitting at 2020. The Jets are sitting at 23. They've got Marcus May on a a franchise tender, and they've traded Jamal Adams, right? Okay. So we got to get to 20. 20 is the pick to have. Trayvon Mooring is on the board, and you call Chicago. You say, listen, we'll give you 30. We'll give you our third round pick this year. And we'll give you our third. And we'll give you our third round pick in 2023. I think that's a fair deal. Okay. You, you do have Hyde and you do have Poyer together for 2021 and 2022. If you want it, do you pull the trigger for Trayvon Mooring from TCU? Who's probably the best safety in this draft. I mean, not, not probably he's clearly the best safety in this draft. Do you pull the trigger? on that player and i think that will tell you whether or not you trust the bill scouting department or not i think that question alone will you give up one asset this year will you give up another player this year third round pick right so that that episode we did on joe tryon that was just that he's gone (laughs) right you're gonna punt tryon just as an example you're gonna punt you're gonna punt a player like that right to get Trayvon Mooring. And let me just give Hashtag Nation a little bit of a background. He is a junior. He's 6'1", 200 pounds, 33 bench press reps at his pro day. 33. He led the nation in pass breakups from the safety position, right? The guy's a hammer at the safety position. A hammer. Is that where you go? Do you give up a third this year and a third next year with 30 to jump to 20 to get ahead of two teams who are probably safety needy to draft the best safety in this draft? Is that what you do? Am I trading Devin Singletary for to replace that third next year? This move this move is in a vacuum. You are not vacuum. making any other moves. Because again, trading a third he this is, year to he, trade up, that that's creating first round, second round fifth round that's what you're doing to yourself right you trade that third round pick you got nothing else in the tank to the fifth round are you doing it that is uh, it's tempting but i will issue the question from hashtag nation if you have point poyer and hide until 2023 why do you do it why do you do it if you got you're planning for the future you're going to you're going to trade up and trade two future guys that could be starters on your team for a guy that's not even going to play in 2021. Mm-hmm. And maybe 2022. Mm-hmm. So you're trading two four-year deals, affordable deals to move up to play a guy who's only going to really exercise two years of his deal and maybe a fifth-year option. Mhm. Let I me, know it's early, but did you have something to drink today? <laughs> he is impressive. I'm not going to take anything away from the kid. The guy is a, a an alpha. He's, <laughs> for he's lack instant, of a better. 
he's instantly your nickel linebacker. Instant. He's amazing. He's absolutely. I, I would. I would love he's to have instantly that guy. your nickel linebacker. But the resources you're going to give up. Are, are you talking about? Now, does this go strictly on the draft, or does this go on? This is what you would like to see the Buffalo Bills do with their defense to change it up. This is the. This is based on player. I, this I the player. Just, this is the player. I like now, we talk about good safeties, but a lot of times you see these really nice safeties come out of college and they're five eleven. You know, like yeah. we can you can find that somewhere. Like you can find a six foot linebacker to play your nickel linebacker role who happens to be undersized and fast. Like they make these guys every year. Yeah. You know, like you can find that player. I think Morig is different. Like, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of problems that are within his film that you know we could sit there and point he out. Beat on double moves a lot. I remember, I remember reading that. Yeah, that I and I, I agree. There's a lot of things out there that can get you about Morig, right? But he'll play for you day one. He'll instantly slide in as your nickel linebacker. He could play slot coverage. There was no safety in college um, who got targeted as much as him. And he also led in pass breakups, right? Like, that's just... What are you going to do? If that's your biggest, if that's your biggest hole, if you trust the bill scouting department, you make that trade. If you don't trust the bill scouting department, you don't make that trade. What do you, what, why does my trust hinge on going up for a safety is something that the Buffalo bills don't necessarily quote unquote need at this point. You think they really need, that's the number one need. Usually what you're giving up mm -hmm. third rounder this year, third rounder next year with the limited amount of picks that you have not having a fourth rounder, mm -hmm. That is something that a, a team does for an impact player day one. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a guy that's not going to play for two years, maybe. You're not asking him to play safety right away. You're asking him to play or or you have percent of the snaps, or you're playing him at safety and Poirier drops down and is just your nickel linebacker for all time. And then when he gets injured, which will absolutely happen, if you're, you're going to use that Poirier gear up really fast, percent. if you put Poirier in the box, you get, that gear is going to get used up even faster. Oh, I know. I know. I'm not saying that's the way to go. I'm just saying that it's a possibility. Well, I'm just uh, saying, yeah. Mar, listen, he can start for you tomorrow <laughs> in that role. He could start for you tomorrow. What do you do with Klein? Does Klein get the axe then? Who cares? I'm just saying. I'm just trying Who to cares? Say, I'm, try, I'm the one that's trying to come at this from a financial standpoint. You're the <laughs> one that's trying to chase players. The reason, the reason I say that this is where you make the bet, right? is if you're talking about setting up for future years, yeah. right? You're going to leverage as many assets right now that are usable to set yourself up, right? If you think you're one player away on offense and one player away on defense, I think this is this is your biggest need, right? Free agent pass rushers are out there. The Bills don't ever go with elite level pass rushers. So the fact is that that kind of fits the mold of what they've done before. They You will just go out and find more guys who can rush the quarterback kind of okay that's and that's where they live and die they're going to live and die on coverage they're not yeah. going to live and die on pass rush they're going to live and die on coverage and hope the pass rush gets there that's the theory when you have two defense former defensive uh former defensive backs as your head coach in dc the coverage has to be really good it so that's why i don't think that's why i think this move makes a lot of sense how could you not want to do this you're going to look at being at 30 you're going to get what the fourth fifth corner off the board mar is that what you want to do? Do you want to get the fifth corner off the board? Yes. Uh, you got... Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Where was Trey White? That, that, no, no. Erroneous. Erroneous on both counts. <laughs> erroneous on both counts. If you're telling me I'm going to get Morig, and then with my second round pick, I take Tryon, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs>